geared towards developing, nurturing, and reviving radical faith in God for these last days. Today, I have a special guest all the way from Andhra Pradesh, India, he is Paul Orser, and he's going to share in an exciting and powerful interview, I mean, story about how an entire village was converted to Adventism. They were converted to God. And he has some other exciting stories also. I had a chance to talk with him before, and he, he's going to tell you those stories himself, also of a terrorist that got converted. He's making his own health center. So it's all amazing. So, but before we go over to Paul and have him introduce himself, let's just bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our friend and that you're still in the soul salvation of mankind. Lord, help us to realize that we are just laborers in your field. Make us laboring laborers, Lord, to harvest souls for your kingdom, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, Amen. Paul, um, you know, maybe our viewers are wondering, who is Paul? Is he the Paul that the Bible speaks about? <laughs> <laughs> can you just tell you know give us a brief introduction of of yourself yes <laughs> my first name actually permish Kanagala. when i accepted jesus after completing my graduation when i took baptism i've changed my name permish into paul and paul orser surname i took my parents last name to my name <laughs> And uh, I've completed my, oh, sorry, I am from India, state of Andhra Pradesh, district of Kadapa, Vyasar district. I completed my, I completed my medical missionary course in down south located in uh, Tamil Nadu, Jeeva Jyoti uh, Medical Center, I completed my medical missionary course there and I graduated and I teach there for, uh, two and a half years for the students. I graduated there and I teach there. <laughs> it's really my pleasure. And after that, uh, I ask God and I pray, I praying every day and asking God, Lord, what is your purpose on me? And what is your plan about my life? This is not, I want, I want to go into the world and share your good news. I'm praying and I'm praying and, um, Finally, I went to the director, Dr. John Steve, and I told him, Pastor, I want to go and share the God's word. And he said, okay, that's good. Okay, you can go ahead and share Jesus. And I just came out from there and uh, I started doing my ministry. So that's about me, the introduction. <laughs> Okay, that's wonderful. It's good that, you know, I like the fact that you said you asked God, you know, what, you know, you wanted to know what you should do. And it's really good that, you know, when we are at a point when we don't know what to do or what direction to take, that we go to the Lord and we ask him and he will show us, you know, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all you do. And he will definitely guide you in the path that you should go. Absolutely. So, Paul, tell us a little bit about the pandemic situation over there in Andhra Pradesh, where you are. Right now, we're having a very bad situation going on uh, in Andhra Pradesh, uh, this COVID-19 situation. And um, people are really so scared about it. And it is uh, really a pleasure, my pleasure to serve the people, those who are having, those who are having the problem like this. And we are bringing awareness from awareness to the people and we are uh, giving some lectures about the personal hygiene and hygiene and the cleaning, sanitation. You know, we are just teaching them. It's not a dreadful disease. If you yourself, if you keep clean, you won't get such kind of disease. And right now, we're, uh, right now in Kadapa, we have 147 positive cases mm -hmm. in a COVID hospital. And around we have a, around 43,000 people are in quarantine. So it is quite, 
bad situation i can say but still we having the lockdown here and um, in some places we have still we have the red zone mm -hmm. okay all right thank you so there is um opportunity for medical missionary work uh, <laughs> And you know this probably will lead us um, into your testimony. You have a wonderful testimony about an entire village that was converted to God. And I'm sure, like our viewers are just waiting, and they're like, "Oh, I really want to hear this powerful testimony." So, can you share um, that experience um, with with us? Yeah, sure. So, when I first my first uh, journey started to the up north. See, doing a, actually in even in the South India, we having a very uh, too much Hinduism in down South India. So there are a lot of Hindus. Of course, even the population in India, you can see nearly 70, 70 to 80 percent of people are Hindus in India. Only we have 15% we have Christians and rest of them are Hindus, uh, rest of them are Muslim. And so in this situation, I'm hearing so many messages, so many news, I'm watching in the news and television and newspaper reading and watching in the YouTube. The situation is very bad in the up north. There is no Christianity mostly. People are really eagerly, excitedly waiting for the good news of Jesus. Some of my friends are keep on calling me, Brother Paul, please, why don't you visit? Why don't you visit our place? Why don't you visit our place? We are seeing in your Facebook and we are listening about you in various places that you are going and spreading Jesus and uh, you are doing your medical ministry. Even we people are want the medical lectures health awareness lectures and uh, healthful living lectures. And please, why don't you come and visit us? And so I asked another friend who is belong to uh, the North, the North India, Northeast India. I asked him, hey, I want to come there. So what do you think? I said, hey, brother Paul, we want to let you know one thing before you come. Please do not get any nervous. Do not get any scare looking at the area where you are going to go. So, of course, you don't care and you don't bother about that because you were doing God's work. And I told him very clearly, my dear brother, doesn't matter where I'm staying. Treat me like your family member. I don't want a luxurious life when I come there. I don't want anything special. I am a, just a simple, common man who are carrying all the way around the place to uh, Northeast India, the good news of Jesus. That's all, don't treat me anything else, I said. And so he said, oh, wonderful. We are looking for such kind of guy, let's go. So I make a plans. My dear sister, you can't believe this. The travel from Andhra Pradesh to the Assam, the state of Assam, it is one, one, one full morning, again another night, again morning to evening, and the next day I arrived there by train. So wow. long, long, long ways. <laughs> my goodness, I was so weird. What is this? Where I'm traveling? Am I going to another country? <laughs> and so that is the first time that I travel. And that is the first time uh, I get to know that. So India is very big. <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway finally we arrived there around uh, around uh, three o'clock early in the morning one of my friend he is waiting there and he's slowly walking and walking and coming because he is a little handicapped but still he having zeal to support like us missionaries and receive them and take them where the news needed and so he came and he picked me up at the train station. And I said, oh, brother, I'm so much thankful to you for waiting for me and pick me up. And he said, he just started tearing. Oh, what's going on with you? I said, and he said, 
you are the first person who coming from the south india to our place to visit us to visit our village we invited many people but nobody come mm. and you are the first person who are coming and so i feel so happy for that and i i'm so much thankful to god for giving me that wonderful tremendous opportunity to go and visit them and so i started going actually uh, i'll tell you that the, the the two things which i want to tell you that will add in this in the story and so i started going and one auto nobody i am calling so many autos my friend is calling so many autos but nobody is coming to take to that village and i realized and i asked hey what's going on why nobody is coming and uh, picking us i mean uh, taking us auto uh, so he said brother paul uh, i'm sorry i didn't tell you two things so i asked what are the two two things he said there is no road for my village that is the first thing and the second thing is there is no electricity in that village i oh. was just shocked what <laughs> this is the 21st century we are living <laughs> in and what the news you are telling to me is that yes brother paul because if i tell these two things you will take your step back and you don't visit us he said oh brother don't think that way anyway we'll wait and we'll pray to god and we'll see sure because god has brought me all the way here and i'm sure i believe he will take us to the village and we started that early morning started praying and one auto guy he is waiting opposite to us i slowly walked down actually i don't know how to speak in hindi language i mean north indian language properly mm -hmm. and i went close to him and i asked in english brother can you take us to a gusai gaon the village name is gusai gaon gusai gaon mm -hmm. yeah so i asked him he said oh that is very long ways i am sorry i cannot come i said no brother i can give you extra money i said uh, money is not matter sir but uh, there is no proper way to go to that village he said okay and uh, i told i i introduced myself to that other guy brother i am coming from andhra pradesh and that auto guy was shocked you are coming from andhra pradesh such a long ways and immediately he said uh, there is no any second word sir please bring your luggage put it in our auto we'll go he said praise the lord <laughs> what an amazing man come on let's go and i called my friend hey come on come on bring our luggage let's go and this auto guy he took all the way to that village and uh, i'm trying to give him some extra more money uh, what he expected more than that i'm trying to give but he said no no sir i don't want money i don't want money i'm very happy it is my pleasure to bring you and drop you in this village because i know you are coming you came on a particular purpose little bit english i can uh, understand i know you both your friends you and your, your friend are talking something so that's okay sir i don't want any money he said Oh, again! I said, "Praise the Lord! That is wonderful." And I said, "Okay, let's go." And uh, one guy he came with a very old bicycle to take our luggage. And I can see there is a rain over there that night. Full, they having very big rain, and he came with the bicycle to take my luggage and to pick me up in that village. So he put my one suitcase and one backpack on his cycle. and slowly he started taking us to that village sister you can't believe there is no road at all what he what my friend told exactly that is what there there is no road there is some creeks passing by we need to cross the creeks in the water only so there is no there is nothing there is no electricity even to charge my phone to charge my camera there is nothing nothing how can i be in touch with my friends and my home i don't know what to do and i ask my friend what's going on man how can i be in touch with my parents he said i'm sorry brother i'm very sorry for that but i will make something arrangement for you and he called to some people town uh, to the town which is uh, around uh, 35 kilometers away 
and he called somebody and he made some arrangements after 3 days <laughs> praise the lord so, actually my parents and my family are just waiting and waiting for me there is no word i went very far away so that's what happened there and i seen the situation there is a completely people that do not have uh they do not uh, you know the customs are different than us here their customs is completely different their food is completely different to us their water is completely different to us there is nothing which is equal to us i was mm-hmm. so shocked oh brother what's happening here what the government is doing and what's what is this this is ridiculous i don't appreciate this what this government is doing i don't like it i'm saying to my friend that's why brother i called you maybe we can bring some change in the people we can bring some you know mm-hmm. awareness living awareness at least we can bring in these people so i feel so sad about them and i cried for them and that evening i took whole day rest and that night um, that evening my friend came to me and uh, he said tonight we are going to visit this village and we are going to village we are going to visit two villages tonight he said okay i came here to share god's word make it as much as possible i want to reach the people i want to take the word of god to the people so i went there and first i started with a health message mm. i started teaching about the personal hygiene and sanitation to the people so people i can see how excitedly they are listening the message what i am teaching what i am talking to them and my friend is a excellent translator i highly appreciate him he did a great job i believe because i can see their attention when I'm, when i'm preaching and so i preach uh, 25 minutes of health message and i slowly started speaking about jesus mm-hmm. if god really i feel that moment if there is a, any facility of electricity i would i love to show the jesus picture to them but i didn't get that opportunity because there is no electricity and so anyway i started in the beginning what happened in the beginning uh how this globe and who divided the earth water you know who divided all these things i teach them i slowly started started sharing jesus with them they are so attention i can see the people oh brother after the meeting my friend is saying brother i can see their attention they they want more i can see in them but some of the and uh, in between i want to add one more thing when i preaching the jesus i got some disturbances mm-hmm. after health message uh, when i am starting when i ask the question do you know jesus so there i have some error two guys they stood up and they said yeah somebody came like you once upon a time our guy preaching this you know what happened we just beaten him and we send him up so guy you want to go like that you want like like uh, like that kind of uh, heating from us i said i started slowly walking to him very close and i put my arm around him and i said my friend i love you so much because you are my brother if you want to beat me yes you can do that and he said what why are you getting so closer why did you put your hand on my arms what's what's matter he said and he left from there just he said only the two words actually i don't know that thing my friend translated me after he left Mm-hmm. this is what he said and he left and another guy he came and he just uh, started shouting the people there what's going on here you people said that this is the health message and this guy is teaching something else he is diverting our minds he is telling something else about some god which we do not know anything he is diverting our minds he is expecting something from us he shouted and he left uh because 
you know the the interesting thing is i don't understand what he is talking <laughs> i just lose my courage <laughs> because he is speaking in his own language but i don't understand that language actually that is not a hindi language that is some uh, bodo language some gurkha language and there are some tribes santali language like this there are some tribes of languages so he spoke so he, he just scolded me something in his language and he left and again he didn't come and i asked my friend what 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 he said he is mad with you and he is scolding everybody why are you gather here you people said that he is teaching health and this guy is diverting our minds and telling about some god which we do not know which we didn't hear any time and so so brother paul i just wanted to can i just say something quickly so you're saying that these people from assam they were mostly hindus yes okay yeah so actually i am in a yeah you can hindu, yeah hindu village hindu territory yeah and so it happened the first day 20 people came and second night another uh, two villages people added and another night another uh, another 20 people again added like this day by day the crowd is increasing and i told my friend i would like to spend some money let's find some big place where people can sit comfortably and where people can have you know comfortable and uh, they can hear properly because i don't want them to sit so congested in one place you know in one small room they don't i don't like this asset and my friend said no 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 paul brother paul no 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 we cannot do that because uh, this state assam is very cruel they are very cruel people and they don't they don't accept jesus at all they don't accept christian doesn't matter jesus they don't accept the word christian so officially we cannot have any kind of meetings like that he said but but inside my heart was saying let's have let because people are coming it is so congested i want word to reach everybody i want everybody mm-hmm. to hear yes so let's have some nice place which is away to the to the villages let's keep some private and he said uh, okay i will try for sabbath he said my goodness sabbath is coming and i am so excited how many people will come but another side i am getting some tension because i am not in touch with my parents i don't know you know they are worrying about me and i don't have any phone communication and uh, there is no word from my side and there is no word from them also so that is one tension and on the other side is this meeting and if some tribal people may get this know that we are going to have this meeting maybe they will bring some error you know satan is bringing so many temptations to in my mind and finally no why i am worrying about these issues let me go and kneel and pray before i go to that that spot to the meeting spot mm-hmm. so yeah. started in with jesus around you know like 20 25 minutes just kneeling and asking lord i need your presence i need the holy angels i need your guardian angels to protect us i want your presence there and you know amazing i can't believe that nearly nearly 160 people gathered over there to listen to the word of god amen i am so happy for that i am so happy for that and that day i started preach i started preaching three simple parables which everybody loved that which is the hidden treasure the another one is the lost sheep and another one is the ten virgins so i am sure they impressed and many want to accept jesus and many want to know about jesus more mm-hmm. and they want to live that life the christian life and in this journey this past 13 days journey of mine in that villages i can see great change 
the food habits, the, the personal hygiene, I can see much, much change in them. I'm so happy for that. And, you know, I want to share this news with my friends, with everybody. So excitingly waiting to share that, you know, here I had a tremendous experience. Many people accepted Jesus. Almost, almost uh, three villages, I can say. Three villages accepted Jesus in that area. I am so thankful to Jesus for that tremendous opportunity. And everywhere I go, I used to share on that place where the cruel people, they don't spare anyone. You know, you can't believe even till today, there they're having a two tribal fighting is going on, which is Bodo and Burka. They need Jesus. They are excitedly waiting, waiting for the good news there. And I'm so thankful to God that today they appointed a pastor over there and pastor is going and he is teaching more and more about Jesus. Still today I have there in my heart every day. I remember them every day in my daily prayers. I pray for them every day. I want to do something, something for them. Their children, I want their children to be in the Adventist school. I want uh, some missionaries to go and visit that people there. Because we need to bring awareness such kind of villages because that is a completely Hindu territory. Mm -hmm. But still, they want Jesus. They want Jesus. They want to accept Jesus. They want to know more about Jesus. They love Jesus. And Brother That's Paul, why. yes. Yeah, I just wanted to cut in. How how long did you stay in Assam? I stayed there for uh, two weeks of period. 14 days. 14 days, okay. Yeah, 14 days I stayed there and I visited many, many, many people and I have a good friendship with the, with the families over there. They are so waiting for someone to come and share this. And so waiting to come and they are so excited to know about this movement. So it is my to and to you know. I believe we're having some connection difficulty. We are not hearing you clearly, Brother Paul. Well, as you know, sometimes the internet, um, you know, acts up now and then, but Paul was just sharing with us. Hopefully um, he gets connected um, again soon. So brother Paul was just sharing how we journeyed, I think about three days from Andhra Pradesh, which is, you know, South India. And he went, you know, to the North and he did uh, evangelistic outreach um, there, so he was just sharing that story. Um, Brother so Paul, sorry. are you there? Yes. I think we lost I'm you. Here. For a bit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so same like same like this. We have another we lost story. It. We lost connection for a little bit. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so we. I was just saying that how you know you traveled all the way from Andhra Pradesh to Assam and how you spend 14 days and how this entire Hindu village was converted to God. And, you know, I like the way how you said you started with the health message and, right. you know, they were receptive to listening to the health message. And you also said after the health message, you started sharing the gospel, but you, you, you shared the, the parables and, you know, people are, they can identify with parables and, you know, the Holy Spirit right. is afraid because you had many thoughts, like many things were going through your mind. You couldn't connect with your parents. Probably they were worried about you. And, you know, some, these are some of the things that the, the, the enemy will try to do to distract us from the work. 
So can you pick sure. up pick up from there? Because we lost you in some of it, so we couldn't hear your the full story. You said when you were praying and you got a bigger place. How did they? How did the village? How did they accepted Christ? Did they yes. all get baptized, yes. or are they still continuing Bible studies? Actually, on that after my prayer. I went for the Sabbath service around 11 o'clock. I, I was there in the morning, 11 o'clock. You can see a big, like, you know, like 160, around 160 people. Oh, my big, that is a big number, actually. I didn't expect that, that many. Around 160. Wow. Around, uh, around four villages. Four villages, people came. Those okay. who want, those who want to give their life to Jesus, they came. Since they are listening past this, uh, you know, twelve days, every night I used to have the meeting. Mm -hmm. Daytime, daytime we are going to have the health, uh, health awareness programs. In the night times we are going to have the Lord's message. Yes. So that is how uh, my journey started when I was there. Mm -hmm. And so these people, they are so impressed of the messages which I'm teaching, which I'm sharing with them. They are impressed. And, uh, you know, I can see some world people, they want to say something to me. But my friend, he came to me, uh, Brother Paul, they want to say something to you. While I'm praying, oh, yeah, yeah, please wait for some time. I'm praying. You know, actually, normally what happens after the message, people started coming. You know, the sick people will come, sir, please pray for us. You know, the old people will come, sir, please pray for us. This is, uh, we have these needs, we want this. You know, in the messages, uh, which I teach, uh, which I preach while I was there, you know, I share, you go and ask Jesus. Jesus is ready to give what you want as his will. So, Sure, if you're having any problems, please go and ask Jesus. He's the free communication. You are you don't need to recharge your phone, you don't need to recharge anything. You just a free communication. Just mm -hmm. go near and ask God, lift your head and ask God, Lord, this is what I want. This is what you know, you will get it. So after keep on hearing these messages, they started coming to us. So please pray for us. Please pray for us. Please, please pray. So were so, anyone um, baptized? Sorry to cut in. What was anyone baptized um, in the those two weeks you were there? Actually, that's what I'm telling. One old man came, of, uh, and I told my friend, "Please, please wait for some time. Let me pray with these people, and I will talk to him." I said. So first one old man came. He said, "Sir, I want to change into Christian. I am a Hindu." I want Jesus. I want to follow Jesus, he said. Mm -hmm. My friend told me that thing to me in, uh, in English. So I told, wow, that is wonderful. One soul. I brought one soul for Jesus. <laughs> and after this, uh, while this communication going on, and three young people came. And they said, sir, every day you will come like this and preach us. Because after you left, who will come and preach here? Oh, that is a big question. And uh, yes, I will pray somebody will come and preach like me here. Sir, we want to know more about Jesus. We want to follow mm. him. Praise the Lord. And again, after this conversation going on, and again, after five women, five women, they came. Sir, we want to accept Jesus. We want to know more about Jesus. In these few days, you know, we feel something in our hearts, some change in our hearts. We want to be there. We want to know more about Jesus. And so like this, I can say there, I can see nearly 60 people after the meeting, after the, well, the conversation is going on, going on, going on. You know, while I'm teaching them, while I'm encouraging them, yes, yes, sister, sure, we will have, we will talk to the leadership here. We will, sure, we will take this 
good news to the people uh, leaders that these people these people need some pastor some bible worker to encourage them every day so we sure we will make that arrangements i said and like that around uh, 60 people they came forward to accept jesus praise the lord praise god jesus and i am so thrilled i just cheered and i prayed and i asked god many 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 thanks so it just thrills my heart lord thank you so much for using me thank you so much i brought this many souls for you lord i'm so much happy for that mm-hmm. and so and i'm so uh, i i cannot control my happiness and again i kneel when i get get back home and i kneel and i pray god and i'm so thankful to him lord you fulfilled lord i doesn't matter i forgot the travel how much far it is but i am so happy this many souls today they came to accept you lord i'm keeping them into your hand please jesus take care of them praise the lord <laughs> so, like that today from that side uh, from that side around uh, around 10 15 medical missionaries are getting trained in down south mm. really that is going to be a great blessing for them all right thank you so much brother paul for sharing that wonderful message of how you accepted the call to go on a three day journey to assam to bring the gospel and an entire village because of the work of the holy spirit in you as you know just like paul in the bible many souls were converted to god you were also telling me a story about a terrorist who was converted too could you just quickly share yeah that? The, reason, the reason i'm hiding this actually this guy is included in this meeting this guy is in this meeting as i told you that area where i went it is a completely countryside it is very far away so you can understand there is no electricity there is no roads so the place where i was there is it is a border to the bhutan the country of bhutan oh okay yes so in that border mostly we can see so many terrorists and you can see so many people who are uh, like independent life living people will be there you know yeah, they are just, fighting just to, just to be clear uh, brother paul don't tell us the names or anything but just share with us the story of how this terrorist um uh, was converted to god just exactly. to protect you know protect people we understand yeah. that part of it yeah, yes I, I, yeah anyway I'm, i'm very sorry for that but anyway and this guy he is continually following me this is a new person who came from south india why he came here what is his purpose he came, he is telling he is a medical missionary so let me see whether he is a medical missionary or whether he is a cbi cid officer or whether he is you know what is his position he want to find out from me actually so i do not know that he is following me every day <laughs> until he told me <laughs> Mm. on fine day so he told me that uh, he is observing me every day he is attending my meetings every day mm. he is going he is a, he his people are in that in that big crowd wherever i go mm. so even of course he is in that crowd actually i don't know who is that exact guy see 160 people came i don't know every day i used to meet nearly 30 40 60 people like that i used to meet every day but i cannot remember everyone face so Too it's difficult <laughs> i'm a new person there i don't know who is who <laughs> but this guy he is coming every day and uh, watching me and uh, you know finding about me and whether he is really a medical missionary whether he is really a god's worker whether he is really came here to share a health message and jesus so i do not know he is attending every day my meetings and he i don't know he feel that when he is sharing with me his experience after the meetings after this 40 after this 13 days when he is telling to me i was just shocked 
sir your parables your messages are really amazing i really realized what a big sinner i am how many lives i killed what life i am living i don't want this life sir i really don't want to be like this person i want to be like a jesus child amen i want to i want to born again sir please sir sir really did jesus will forgive me with my sins he said brother when you said that you want jesus when you want when you said i also want to be like you sir i also want to share jesus like you that day that moment itself jesus forgiven you so don't think that you are still a sinner you mm-hmm. have forgiven already you have forgiven and just throw it out everything and let's follow the jesus that's why i told you 25 minutes i prayed and i prayed and prayed after the my meetings i just so thrilled about that person mm. and very badly i lost his contact number actually recently this year i got my parents bought a new phone from usa so when i'm changing this sim card you know i lost so many numbers so otherwise he would have be in touch with me every time he will call mm-hmm. me and he will send updates sir this is what i did today sir this village i visited today sir this person want to know more about jesus sir please sir please once again come and visit us okay so he is converted now and he's also going to villages and preaching he's yes he's oh, doing God. that amen and well i'm happy wants... yeah, yeah go ahead. sorry go ahead yeah. actually he asked me he want to take a baptism sir i want to take a baptism in your presence he told me several oh. times he... oh Praise brother God. i know maybe it, it may happen but maybe not now but uh, you know you can go to pastor my friend can take you to pastor mm-hmm. in the pastor the baptism no 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 sir i want your presence in the presence of you only i will take baptism and mm-hmm. i want to be you know that, that really thrills my heart and even you know see that very cruel man he accepted jesus and he sharing the good news of jesus and is coming that is a greatness that is a great thing in my life that that cruel man has accepted jesus yeah and this I'm, make I'm, me want to cry <laughs> <laughs> that's why sister i'm telling you yeah. so maybe if god's will if god allows please come i am personally inviting you let's go <laughs> i want to be alive what we what is happening there you can hear from their you know their own language with their own tongue yeah of like how they feel when i was there you know yes so you can um, of course maybe if you come maybe in our presence he can take a baptism praise the lord <laughs> you know we're almost out of time brother paul but before we close in prayer i just want you to quickly share you said that you're starting a health center you're actually building a health center and you share yes, the sir. pictures with me so could you quickly tell us a little bit maybe in 3 minutes about that health center and what activities are you going to bring to the community yes so the health center is my dream and my desire after my graduation so i am seeing the big hospitals and they are charging lots of money from the poor people you know mm-hmm. some of them they they cannot able to pay the money some of them you know they will they will lose their lives because they don't afford they cannot buy the medicine they cannot take the treatment so they used to die some of them even my personal experience i lost my father because mm-hmm. i don't have money my father died with a heart attack so so when my father died that day my dream increased my i want to build and i want to give them free service no charging at all mm. let me do you know the mode of money operation will be i can you know do something else like you know having some farming i can raise and i can support for the health center 
Mm. And this mm-hmm. health center, almost 75% of the health center buildings are completed. As I sent you the pictures. 75%, and there, sorry, you said 75% completed now. The construction. Yes. yes. Yeah, the construction completed. And I am going to give a uh, first aid from the beginning, uh, from the, uh, you know, after completing the construction, I want to start with the first aid, you know, slowly, slowly I can, uh, you know, do some, I can bring big change in that. Actually, my dream is there will be a lifestyle center. There will be a multi-speciality hospital. You know, these two will be there. And also I am thinking there will be a, a, some de-addiction center if God's will, you know, that is also, <laughs> yeah, mm. you can see many young people, they are just addicted to alcohol and they are just spoiling their lives and, you know, like cigarettes and drugs, you know, mm-hmm. if God's will, if God allow, I want that also. Mm-hmm. I have a sufficient property to build all this and uh, really God is so amazing. And here I want to tell, mention one guy name who is a doctor. So I don't want to mention his name. He's a doctor. Uh, he is the one who encouraged me to buy the piece of property mm-hmm. for the health center. Praise so God. We are completely giving a free treatment. Almost we are, we are not charging. We will be charging, but we are charging like only 15%. We, mm-hmm. we are going to charge. And rest of the 85%, we are going to give complete free treatment. Mm -hmm. And we have very humble, very dedicated medical missionaries and doctors we have. So they are so humble. And uh, in this experience, I have met so many people, so many doctors. They all are encouraging me. Paul, we will be behind you. Don't worry. Don't be disappointed. And I feel so thankful to God every time because through him, this project came up to here. Mm-hmm. You know, sister, you can't believe whatever I started this uh, health center construction, all, I did not put one single penny from my pocket. It is all from God. Praise it God. Is all from God. Mm. Even I didn't go and ask anybody, please give something to the health center. They themselves, they took their step forward. So we want to help you. Come on, take this money. I said, no, I don't want money. Buy some material for the construction. Mm-hmm. That's all I want. I don't want your money. <laughs> mm-hmm. You buy the material and I'll give you what we used, where we used that material, all these mm-hmm. things. Yeah. So like that, the people around us, they trusted me and they just, you know, all put together with hands and this came up to here. Amen. Brother Paul, thank you so much for sharing this wonderful, powerful testimony of how God is using you as a medical missionary. And you said you've been a medical missionary, I think for six years, am I correct? Six six years. And how God has used you to convert an entire village, a terrorist, and now you're building your own health center. So God is really being magnified. And I thank you for sharing with us. And you you said that your parents also came, some missionary came, you sent me some pictures of um, some yeah. missionaries that came. Do you want to tell us quickly about that? And then we will ask you to um, to do the closing prayer. Of course, yes. My parents, oh my. See, I'm telling you, sister, without them, today, I don't know who you are. Today, there will be no this interview. And today, nothing. Yeah. They are the one who motivated me and who encouraged me. They live, they are from United States of America. They lives in North Idaho. Mm-hmm. And they are the region 11 hi. gospel. Of- I just want to say hi to your parents. Hi. And oh. hi to all those in North Idaho or living in Idaho. Hi. <laughs> so they, are, they, they live in North Idaho and they're running a, a print shop. And uh, they are so humble family. They are so humble couple. Right now, they are the gospel outreach region 11 directors. Mm. So, so they used to visit every year to India and uh, they will encourage the Bible workers and pastors. They will give training to them. And so they met me in a one boarding school in 2000, millennium. <laughs> in 2000, they came, they, that is their first visit to India. 
So mm-hmm. uh, I'm studying in a Seventh Day Adventist boarding school, which is nearby to our home. So that afternoon, they visited our school. So we, that time, I'm a very small boy there. <laughs> and so that is the first time for us to see so many white people coming mm-hmm. and visiting us. So we are so thrilled and we are so excited. So they conducted one prayer meeting in front of our uh, classrooms. And so we all sit, I'm sitting in the first row. And so we prayed and uh, we sang some songs and uh, orderly they are introducing themselves, you know. And my turn came finally. And so I told, my name is Parmesh. And uh, so they asked me, so what class are you studying? I'm studying third standard. And okay, so what is your aim? And I told, my aim is I want to become a pilot, I said. <laughs> oh, you want to become a pilot? Oh, wonderful. Come, let's go. Come. They took me aside and they're taking some pictures of mine. And that time I'm completely different, you know. Even sometimes I thrill. I remember that one. I never ever forget the first meeting of them. So my hair is in different shape and my face is different and my shirt was torn and my small necker, which is stone. You know, actually, sister, I came from very poor background. I'm very poor background. And they took me, they're so interested. Hey, you know some pilots in America. So we will send you some books when you grow up. Come on, be in touch. And they gave me one card. So after completing my plus one and plus two, so I seen that card. Okay, let me try to this. And uh, so I started writing an email to them. So I didn't get any reply. And after uh, two, three times, I sent an email. And finally, one day, I got a reply from them. Oh, you still remember us. That's nice. And they sent me this many pilot books. Wow. <laughs> from the United States. Uh, that is, thrills me, you know. Amen. And, uh, because of uh, my financial family circumstances, my family situation, Actually, from that time onwards, my father completely, he fell on bed with his sickness. And my poor mother, she used to go to work, daily labor, and she used to bring in, she used to survive the family. Mm -hmm. So with that circumstances, you know, uh, I cannot able to go for that pilot. (laughs) Maybe that time, you know, God may have some plan for my life. So that's why (laughs) that is not your plan, Paul. So you have to go this way. So. So there, from there, I diverted. And one year, my parents came from USA. So I went and met them. And from that time onwards, I am in very strong touch with them. And mm-hmm. so now they are guiding me. They, my mom, she having so much interest on a medical course. So mom always will tell, Paul, do something different, Paul. So do something, do some medical course mm-hmm. that will help you for your future life. That will be helpful for you. You know, she used to always think for future, my mom. So she recommended me to go to the down south uh, for a medical missionary course. And I completed there my medical missionary. My mom was so happy and she's so thrilled. And <laughs> I am doing now, I completed my nutrition course also. And I'm planning to do my diabetic course soon. So these are going to, you know, my mom's plan is very wise. Mm-hmm. You know, all parents, like how all parents think about their children and their children's future. So, you know, my mom, I don't know whether she's watching or not. Mom, you are so, I cannot measure your love for me. You know, you are so uh, amazing to my life. If you are not there in my life, this life is nothing. There is, it is a meaningful life. And today I can able to help some more people with your love and care today i'm going to tomorrow i'm going to do so many great things of your remembrance so thank you so much for filling my heart with a pure love and without any jealous thank you mom thank you so much thank you sister for the opportunity you gave to say many thanks to my mom and thank so, you mom <laughs> and uh, my dad he is very strict he always want to be perfect in everything Dad, dad, all dads must be like that. <laughs> he's, he's a wonderful man and uh, he's a wonderful human being. Always encourage me to grow in Jesus. Always encourage me to be faithful to Jesus. I'm so thankful to him also. 
and uh, my dear loving loving sister gabriela through her <laughs> today i can able to share my witnesses and my story i am so much thankful sister to you for uh, taking my witness to the world introducing me to the world <laughs> and it is really my pleasure please visit india that is my humble request <laughs> praise the lord yes <laughs> Yeah. All right, brother Paul. Thank you so much for this, and I believe that maybe we will do another interview finally when your health, um, your health center, your lifestyle center is open, and we can share um, more stories about that. So, yes. brother Paul, will you close? Sorry, yeah. Uh, and you know, maybe some other time we can have another interview, which uh, you know, about my house, uh, amazing providence of my house. you know where i'm living right now this property mm-hmm. this property having so many problems but uh, god has did a huge miracle in this matter also so maybe some other time we will share first i will share with you <laughs> and we can share with the world praise the lord i just love to hear you seem like you're really the paul from the bible many stories you should probably consider start writing a book and i'll be the first one to uh, purchase um your book please <laughs> thank you thank okay. you okay so. brother paul would you just close for prayer uh close us in prayer and do remember um the brothers and sisters in assam and also you know all the people in the world today um you know that are going through a rough time please remember them in your prayer at this moment i will yeah would you would you mind praying to close for us yes yes yeah, yes, okay. yes. <laughs> thank you my dear gracious heavenly father what a wonderful time lord thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to share this wonderful amazing testimonies of your tremendous miracles i teach jesus thank you for this wonderful technology we can see each other world can see all of us oh lord what a technology father please help us to utilize this technology for your cause for your will father mighty jesus as we are going to close this session please lord let this testimony go every corner in this world let them hear and uh, share this and many them many of them accept jesus lord those who do not know lord thank you so much for using me in your mission and especially i am so much thankful to sister gabriela for her wonderful thought to share to introduce like these testimonies to the world and bring many souls mighty father bless her abundantly and uh, use her talents for your will father bless her abundantly father bless her family mighty jesus as we are going to close this thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity again please be with us throughout the day and protect us and uh, help us to do more and more missionary trips in this india even father mighty lord thank you so much for using us thank you so much for hearing and answering these prayers in jesus wonderful name i pray amen amen praise the lord brother paul you take care and we will definitely keep in touch god bless you thank you sister <laughs> have a good day Yes, you too. Bye-bye. Bye.